I may be I may be slightly out on this. This is possi possible um, cooperation with, with how the job centre works. Now I may, I may be wrong on this, but as I understand it, that when people are kind of looking for work, they they have to go through a much stricter regime than they used to go through. And it seems to me that where you've got people, if you like, who are drug dealing, who aren't working, etc. That I, I don't know whether that whether that's a factor that could be tied in where you kind of. Use the use the job centre resources to get these people to account. But like how come they're in that place when they should be looking for work? Yeah, yeah. Do you, do you see my point? No, I do see that. Yeah. That's a good point. Um, I'm going to ask uh, Mr. Sherbold. You haven't told me yet, but you you asked me an advanced question that I'd like to ask. Uh, yeah, thank you, Gary Sherborne. I've been a resident of Boscombe for 15 years now. Um, I'm also a drug user, Commissioner. I use marijuana for medicinal purposes um, and the majority of this meeting or a big chunk of this meeting has been talking about drug problems and the consequences of drug problems. Um, my problem is that I'm dependent on criminals and the criminal network for my medicine and as Inspector Weeks has pointed out this never ending battle and this constant debate about drug use and drug legislation. Um, and I, I just wanted to point out to you that in America at the moment there are 23 states that have introduced legislation that make it permissible for people like myself to be able to obtain marijuana from licensed and control, controlled establishments. It's proven to have cut down on crime. It's generating revenue for the neighbourhoods that have embraced this concept. Um, tonight there's 85,000 lads in jail and 65% of those are there for non-violent drug-related crimes. And I could go on and on and on and give you loads of evidence how the current drugs war has failed. And it's no longer a war on drugs and drug dealers, it's a war on people, everyday people. And I just wanted to ask you, Commissioner, as the most powerful elected representative that the people of Dorset have got, is there any chance that you might break the taboo and step out of the box that we're in and start looking at alternatives to the current status quo. We've got models all around Europe and I've got a bag full of the paperwork that shows you the legislation that needs to be addressed. There is, there is a way to, to, to look at this issue from a different point of view. And I'd like a commitment from you, Commissioner, that you might take the time to introduce all of our community leaders get them together around the table and have an honest and frank discussion about alternatives to, 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 to the mess that we're in. Okay, thank you for that. So, uh, thank you. Okay, so my, my answer to that question, uh, Gary asked me that question this morning, um, and uh, the answer I would give to you is a commitment that yes, I will, uh, because you're right, as, as well as with the uh, largest selected official groups, that I am, my role is that of facilitation. Um, and uh, I am going to facilitate that drug conference in the early start of next year. The reason it will be that long is that I have three conferences stacking up uh, alcohol, child abuse and domestic <coughs> violence uh, for the end of this year. So my next conference will be all the key players in Dorset, including people like yourself, service users if you like, to discuss alternative ways of uh, addressing the cannabis problem. The reason I can make that commitment now, and I refuse to make that commitment last year when Peter Reynolds asked me, because the national campaigner for cannabis legisl uh, legislation, as you probably know, lives about a mile from police headquarters in Dorset. The reason I didn't do that last year was because I felt things were in flux. I thought the government would take the lead. They haven't. I still wait with interest to see what happens in the election. I'm sure one of the two parties will change their stance. But what is interesting in the last year for me is that, as you say, 23 states have now uh, legalised it in America. Sweden and Venezuela are, are in the process or have legalised. Uh, and far more importantly for me, two chief constables of English police forces have now called for a different approach. Uh, and I spoke to my chief constable today, uh, and with her backing, uh, we are going to hold a drug conference in Dorset early next year. That's fantastic to know. I'd just like to add as well that the, 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 the chap who's in charge of the prison system has come out publicly to state that the, you know, the situation is intolerable. So well, uh, it, it's, a, say, it's a no, difficult cookie, but I'm glad, well, I'm well, glad to say, see. Mary, it's firstly the police, and when I say she wants backing, she knows what I'm doing, but she can't get involved, um, and even can use the police officers here. 
But what I would say is the police have to enforce the law and the government side the law, not, not us. Uh, and secondly, I cannot change national law, but I can lobby for it. And uh, I do recognise that there's a need to change the way we do things. But it isn't as easy, not as clear cut as it could be. There are two sides of that coin. I know some people in this room already will be angry to hear what you've said. It's a very emotive subject. It's a very emotive subject for me. One of my close family members, my own son, has cannabis psychosis. Uh, and he got that through kind of smoking cannabis. That's right, that's what um, And, that's what you know, 5% of the population get cannabis psychosis. So, uh, you know, it's not as clear cut as... 95% don't. That is, you know, it's, 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 it's a difficult one for me, I must say. Yes. Thank you. I'm taking morphine and jazepam given to me by the doctor. And believe me, jazepam and, and, uh, and uh, jazepam, morphine and jazepam are much, much more dangerous than making a cake with marijuana, which I very often do when I can find someone who can actually find me a supply. Well, you know, so I have to make someone a criminal to get something which relieves me, right? And I think we don't have to go to America to, <coughs> to be able to live normally. If you if you look at uh, the, the, the change in the last year in Europe about drug uh, enforcement, it's clearly always on the move. Things are changing, and that's why I ask her to ask Because I, I don't function why, before, why, no, I without morphine. Do you think it's normal? No, it isn't. No, I understand. She doesn't so have psychosis either, by the looks of it. No, I don't have any. No, um, there you go. Research. That psychosis would have been hereditary. <laughs> they would have got yes. that whether they smoked or not. Oh, come on. Can I, uh, we've got two or three councillors here and a... You have to speak up a bit, Harry, sorry. Right, you were saying about begging. Can I ask any councillor?